the most uneventful island, the Isle of, of Muir, the story starts. The most beautiful island turned into the most raw and dangerous place. From peaceful weather to howling winds, the story starts in the year 1900 when a group of curious people decided that the amazing Isle of Muir is a perfect place to do their 100th archaeologic dig. This was of course when the island was beautiful. Leading this gang of curated entrepreneurs was Big Headed Bruce. Yep, that's right, the guy didn't have a middle name or even a surname, he was just Bruce. Unsurprisingly, his bad nature led to somehow him having lots and lots of money. Possibly, that had ended up to him being a massive nuisance. Oh well, I guess we'll never know. Shockingly, this man was utterly fascinated by history, which concluded to the beginning of the Big Dig team. Without a doubt, Bruce had to have the most Gucci clothes. He wore the leather jacket, he never took it off, combat black leggings and cowboy boots. He also wore a jet black cowboy hat and an orange kerchief rested on his neck. Not a typical middle-aged man, was he? Finishing off the look was his moustache, which he would fiddle with annoyingly all of the time. He had a Pinocchio nose and big monkey ears, but you could just see them from his cowboy hat. Stomping like a hippo in the mud, yelling at people wherever he goes, nobody liked him but put up with him anyway. The archaeologic team all looked fairly the same, what with them all wearing bright neon yellow tracksuits, covered with muck and stir, and with them all with masks on. They're well into the dig now, and his team are ploughing on like soldiers digging trenches. Obviously, Bruce is there, giving orders like they were candy. Occasionally, someone will find a piece of china or glass. It's not good enough, barked Bruce. Suddenly, a scream was projected to the sea of workers. Well, Bruce has never ran faster. Pushing and shoving through the people to see a young worker lying on the ground, clearly, clearly diseased, deceased. Tragic, isn't it? said a nasty voice from behind. The culprit was a man, probably the same age as Bruce, wearing an enchanting, exquisite jacket, which was a dazzling green colour, mustard yellow jeans, and for some reason, bright pink heels. If you compared him to Bruce, Bruce looked quite genuine. With a sneer looking face, you just liked him instantly. Who are you and why are you disrupting my dig? shouted Bruce. How dare you shout at me, screamed the man. I am the god of destruction and I have come from Melanimous Fallon. I have no idea what you are talking about, replied Bruce. The bottle of destruction, of course, still not falling. That, shrieked the god, pointing a bony chalk white finger at the bottle, which was clasped in the now extinct girl's hand. That is evidence of a crime. You shall do no such thing, cried Bruce cried angrily. I shall give you five seconds, warned the god. Five, no, four, still no, three, I'm calling the police, two, where is my telegram machine? One, found it, zero. Thunder shook the valley they were working on. Lightning struck, screams were screamed, the god was gone. Back in the town, it was hor horrif horrific. Tsunami struck, lightning destroyed everything, and in addition to that, people were being killed like flies under threat from fly swatters. Cowardly, Bruce ran to the sea and threw millennia spalling in the sea. All was quiet. Suddenly, he realised he was alone. Being the only person on this dismal, dire island, with no way of escape, he died not too long after the incident. 